Hi, I'm David the Bruce, and this is part two of The Tiger Woman, starring Linda Sterling. Wow, Linda Sterling. She is best known in her acting career as the serial queen queen. <laughs> she did she did a number of them. And, uh, <clears throat> well, actually, in The Tiger Woman, she has 12. So we've divided it into three parts, four episodes each. And we've colorized them. At the end of each of these segments, we have uh, some surprise um, uh, videos at the end uh, about her life. Uh, we have some trailer, the trailer for this mixed in, and uh, some facts about the, the history of the, the jungle, jungle Queen. So, yeah, stay tuned to the end for uh, a little addition. We've also colorized these. Uh, we have an algorithm that can do that, and sometimes it does pretty good, sometimes not. It looks more like sepia than color, but hey, it's pretty darn good. And we've also used the best print that we could find to uh, put it in. So I think you're really going to enjoy this. All right, here we go. feels much better. If it hadn't been for you, we'd have both gone over to the falls. And what's more, you saved the petrometer. There's still time left to locate the oil well before our franchise expires. We'll be in danger as long as this Morgan is alive. Well, since you've discovered his headquarters, we ought to be able to break up his gang. Jose, take the petrometer out to the temple. We'll take the boat back to town and have the Commandant's men raid Morgan's cave. We can pick up our prisoner on the way. Right. We had it. 
had it and Jose too. And then Saunders and the Tiger Woman came and... How about the men Daggett sent here by boat? I don't know. I was knocked out and when I came to, everybody was gone. Saunders and his pal must have got away with a petrometer. We'd better... Here comes a boat now. It's probably the men Daggett sent here. It's the Tiger Woman and Saunders. Here's where we turn the tables. Light on over. Well, they're just the way you were. He's tied up just as we left him. Careful, Saunders. If you make a move, the tiger woman dies. What are we waiting for? Why not gun them down right now? They may be of more use to us alive. Guard them until I come back. All right, get over there. Saunders and the Tiger Woman both in our hands. We don't have to worry about the Interocean Oil Company anymore. We'll dispose of Saunders at once. No. We need him. We're convinced that the Tiger Woman is heiress to the Arnold Millions. Arnold's personal belongings would prove that in any court. According to native custom, they'd be put in an urn and buried beside his body. Saunders can get that urn. He can travel freely through the jungle. And he'd do anything to save the Tiger Woman's life. All right, what's your proposition? I'm giving you a chance to save the tiger woman's life and your own too. All you have to do is to go to the temple and get the high priest to give you the urn that is buried in the tomb of the great white sky god. Bring the urn back here and you both go free. Why would you desecrate the tomb of the sky god to obtain the urn? It contains nothing of any value, only his personal belongings. We have our own ideas about that. How do I know you'll keep your word? That's our proposition. Take it or leave it. The high priest would never give up that urn. Then it's up to Saunders to talk him into it. It's our only chance. All right, I'll try it. Now you're being sensible. But don't get any ideas about calling in the police. Before you leave, I'm sending the Tiger Woman to a secret hiding place. If you double crosses, she dies. You know where to take her. Someone with brains figured out that plan. Thanks. As soon as I'm sure she's at the new hideout, I'll turn you loose. And you'd better head right for the temple. I trust no white man. I will send my own warriors to attack our enemies and to rescue our queen. You forced me to do this, but I'll kill you if you touch that gong. To send your men on the warpath now would mean her certain death. Can't you see that the only way to save her is for me to carry out my agreement with Morgan? If I fail, my own life will be forfeit. Jose, I must have your help. But I want to warn you, your life will be in grave danger if I fail. I'm always at your command. Well, guard him. I'll get the urn and take it out to the depot landing at once. Make a move until we open it and make sure it's what we want. Here it is. Are you sure that's it? Yep. All right. Hand it over. Now, wait a minute. We made a deal. I'm going to keep this until I'm sure the Tiger Woman is safe. 
We have to know what's in that first. Then we'll send a radio to turn her loose. Hand it to him. in the elevator.
Mad, ruthless oil pirates and trouble to the land of the Tiger Woman. Crossing the world to help her, Alan Saunders, a thrill-hunting soldier of fortune, is constantly shadowed by the threat of death and has the most spine-chilling adventures of his thrill-packed career when he joins forces with the Tiger Woman. The men that are causing you this trouble are my enemies as well as yours. And I promise to do everything within my power to bring them to justice.
wait here. I'm going back after Morgan. The power's off. It's no use, Alan. I heard the men say there was another way out of the mine up there. What happened to the urn from the tomb of the sky god? It's safe in my saddlebag. We'll take it back to the temple at once. You will find the urn unopened, Ramgar. You are a brave and honorable man. I was wrong to mistrust you. My people will forever be grateful to you for the safe return of this sacred relic. Well, I can't understand why Morgan was so anxious to get it. If we knew what was in it, we might learn his motive and why he keeps trying to capture the Tiger Woman. That is true, Ramga. You alone know its contents. If you... No, no! In this urn are the sacred relics of our great white leader. They must not be profane. If I can help your friends in any other way, they have only to speak. But we need help now. Our franchise has almost run out. We still have to locate the oil pool, establish a camp, and set up our drilling rig. With this petrometer, it is easy to locate the oil. You can start on that job right now, Jose. But we still have to establish the camp at the field and guard the road to it. My warriors will guard the road. I myself will go with Jose to set up the camp while he searches for the oil. We'll need more food and camp supplies. Here, I'll make you a list. Fine. The truck with the drilling equipment is coming up from Laporte this afternoon. I'll have it stop at Belleville and pick up the supplies at Daggett's store. Oh, good morning, Saunders. Well, hello, Daggett. Here's a list of supplies I need. Oh, we'll fix you up right away. How are things going? Fine. Looks like we've hit clear sailing at last. The Tiger Woman has established a field camp for us, and the Jose is operating the petrometer. Our drilling equipment is coming through this afternoon from report. That's fine. I hope you won't have any more trouble from Morgan's gang. Oh, I don't think we will. The warriors have put a barricade across the only road to the field. If you have those things ready by 3 o'clock, my truck will pick them up on their way through from the report. We'll have them. Heard him? Yes. Sounds bad. We'll have to take care of Saunders or else wreck their equipment. We'll do both and get the Tiger Woman too. You must hijack that truck before it reaches here. Replace the crew with your own men. We'll use them to draw Saunders into a trap. Then we'll use the truck to get past the barrier to the camp, the Tiger Woman. All right, I'll get started. You'll have to hurry. Everything must be set by three o'clock. Yeah, that's everything, Mr. Saunders. Is your truck here yet? No, but it should be. Your truck's here, Saunders. I just saw it parked in front of the cafe. Well, those men had orders to hurry. I'll get them started. He's walking right into our trap. Are you the inner ocean driver? Yeah. Who are you? Saunders, your boss. You're on a rush job. Come on, let's go. Don't crowd me, fella. There'll be plenty of time after a little drink. Well, toss off your drink and get started. Toss it off, eh? Okay. You're the boss. Looks like they set a trap for you. It certainly does. I'll have to make a report to the Commandant. 
I'm going to have that fellow out there on the truck. Stop at your place and get that load aboard. Will you see that he gets it? Sure. We'll take care of everything. Thanks. I'll be back in time to show him the way to the oil camp. So it's up to you now, Morgan. Hide in that truck and stay hidden until you get past the warrior guards. Then finish off Saunders and go on and take care of the camp and the Tiger Woman. Right. We're coming to the barricade pretty soon. Once we pass there, we can go to work on Saunders. Okay. What's that pack horse doing here? It was taking explosives to your camp. It became lame and could go no farther. I see. Well, I guess you better load the explosives on the truck. Yes, sir. Isn't it dangerous for me to haul that stuff? This truck rides awful hard. All right. Put it in my station wagon. I guess you can go right ahead. Just follow the road, you'll come right to the camp. Yes, sir. Slow down and let him close in. Right. sense to clean up that camp. We're lucky. The petrometer shows a large oil pool only a short distance from here. Splendid. That should be good news for Alan. He and the truck driver should be here soon. We must prepare some food for them. I'm hungry, too. I'll help you. The supplies are in the cave. Fine. Tagula, get some wood and build a fire. What happened? We heard a great explosion, and I came to see. They wrecked my car and went to the camp in the truck. Let me have your horse. Where does this stream go? I don't know. If it has an outlet, we ought to post a guard there. Yes, let's go and see. Isn't Mr. Saunders with you? He's following us. Where's Jose and the tiger woman? In the cave. I will call them. Nice work. Now we'll get the others. There's no opening. The water must seep through the gravel. Evidently. No one could get through here. They must be in that tunnel. That's Morgan. Give me one of your guns.
We'll never get them out of there. Yes, we will. Keep them busy. Here is the incredible story behind Jungle Queens from Xi to Sheena. At one time, it was an international craze. A Jungle Queen, and there are several, is a dominant, independent exotic woman who lives in a strange land or time. H. Ryder Haggard called her, she who must be obeyed. Writer Doug Mann observed that the Jungle Queen looks more like a proto-icon of third-wave feminism than an objectified pinup. The first Jungle Queen made her debut in 1887 with H. Ryder Haggard's novel She, which was about a 2,000-year-old white beauty named Aisha who rules over a native tribe. He dubbed her She Who Must Be Obeyed. Margaret Atwood, the author of The Handmaid's Tale, said, whatever she might have been thought to signify, its impact upon publication was tremendous. Everyone read it, especially men. Following She, Rima the Jungle Girl was introduced in The Green Mansions, a 1904 novel by W. H. Hudson. Famed actress Audrey Hepburn would later star as Rima in the 1959 Green Mansions movie. Most might think that Tarzan came before the Jungle Queens. Not so. It was a quarter century after she was published that Edgar Rice Burroughs' Tarzan of the Apes was introduced 1 in 1912. Of course, this archetypal feral child raised in the African jungle would become a template for the later Jungle Queens. It might surprise some to know that Edgar Rice Burroughs wrote a couple of Jungle Queens books. In 1913 Burroughs published Cave Girl, and in 1929, Jungle Girl. Surprisingly, in 2015, Tarzan's Jane becomes a Jungle Queen as well in Swords of Sorrow. Unlike other superheroes, like Superman, who appeared in comics before their screen debut, the Jungle Queens appeared in the movies first. Then in the comics. The first Jungle Queen movie screened in 1899. That is 38 years before Jungle Queen comics. A few of those films would include Haggard's 1899 She, The Pillar of Fire, Perils of the Jungle in 1927, The Savage Girl in 1932, and Queen of the Jungle in 1935. In 1937 Sheena was the first Jungle Queen comic. Sheena was the first comic dedicated solely to a female character, a historic milestone. Sheena's name was derived from H.R. Haggard's She, but is patterned after Tarzan and was similar to Burroughs's Princess of Mars. Her appearance reflected the then popular pinups. Sheena's popularity gave rise to many imitations. Comic book publishers wanted to cash in on the craze. Suddenly there were titles, like Tegra Jungle Empress, Jan of the Jungle, Princess Pantha, and Tonda White Princess of the Jungle. Just look at all these Jungle Queen comics. It was a major craze. Suddenly Hollywood ramped up Jungle Queen productions. Movies inspired comics and comics inspired films. Media companies and publishers were cashing in. 
Here is a partial list of the many Jungle Queen movies from the 1940s through the 1960s. And then it crashed. Psychologist Dr. Frederick Wortham's 1953 book Seduction of the Innocent blamed comic books for different kinds of maladjustment in young minds. The early 1950s saw a nationwide anti-comics movement. Angry parents and church groups instigated it during a boom in graphic horror comics. By the mid-1950s, nearly 75% of the U.S. comic book publishers had been forced out of business. To survive, the comic book industry began to self-censor, establishing the Comics Code Authority. The code saved the industry, but it didn't help sales. Recovery took years. Generally, throughout the late 1950s, 1960s, and 1970s, Jungle Queen comics were no longer published thanks to the church groups, anti-comic campaign, and the code. Fiction House. That published Sheena was forced out of business by the anti-comic movement. Their last Sheena comic was published in 1953. She Sheena, the Jungle Queen, has been accused of being sexist, imperialist, violent, and racist. In his well-researched article, Doug Mann wrote, A primordial rumble in the comic book Jungle, Sheena rehabilitated, disagrees and says the charges are mostly unfounded, like imperialism, the evidence for her sexism is weak at best. A fair court of comic book critique will find the post 1940s Sheena innocent of these two charges and guilty of the third, racism, to a much lesser degree than her accusers have suggested. Case closed. Long live the Jungle Queen. End quote. Ah, but like with most superheroes, there is always a resurrection. Sheena rose again in a syndicated TV series in 1955 56 with Irish McCalla in the lead role. Sheena was back. In 1956 Leanne, Jungle Goddess hit the screen with a topless 16-year-old Marion Michael as the Jungle Queen. It had two sequels. Betty Blythe, in the 1925 she was topless too. Sheena rose still again 30 years later when Tanya Roberts brought her to the big screen. She rose as still again 15 years later when Jenna Lee Nolan brought her back to television in 2000-2002. Like the Jungle comics, Jungle Queen movies had tapered off from the mid-1950s forward. But, she was the queen that has survived best. She returned in 1965, starring Ursula Andress. Followed by The Vengeance of She in 1968, another she in 1984, and is still another she in 2001. But in other ways, the Jungle Queen lives on. That dominant, Independent exotic woman lives on in many of today's movies and comics. Consider The Hunger Games, Tomb Raider, Black Panther, Dora and the Lost City of Gold, and so many others. These are the offspring of the Jungle Queens with that the dominant, independent exotic woman who lives on and always will. We have always needed her. We always will. It is. She. Who. Must. Be. Obeyed.
since there's no opening. The water must seep through the gravel. Evidently. No one could get through here. They must be in that tunnel. They have the Tiger Queen and Jose trapped in there. Drop that gun. Drop it. Keep him covered. They move, blast them. I'll put out that fire. Captured them. Tagul is holding them at the mouth of the cave. Come on. You better tell us who your boss is, Morgan. He can't help you now, and it'll go a lot easier with you. I'm my own boss. Let us take them to the temple for sacrifice. They will be forced to speak before they die. That is the thing to do. No, we'll turn them over to the Commandant. They'll talk when they find themselves charged with murder. But the Commandant has no authority here in the jungle. That's right. So we'll take them back to the construction camp and have the troopers pick them up there. Your testimony will be needed to convict them. I'll do anything to help my people. Good. I'll take these men to the construction camp and the tiger woman and her warriors can guard them there while I report to the commandant in town. Get going. Calling N6. Calling N6. Something's gone wrong. Morgan was to radio from the hideout when he finished the job. I should have been hours ago. He must be dead or captured. Well, if he's dead, we have nothing to worry about. But if Sanders captured him and turned him over to the Commandant, he might talk to save his neck. I don't think so. He knows we'll do everything we can to get him off. We'd better make sure he doesn't forget that. You better have Wilson jailed on some minor bailable offense. Then if Morgan's brought in, Wilson can warn him to sit tight. We'll watch the jail and see what happens. Oh, Mr. Saunders. I'm happy to see you. What brings you here? We captured Morgan and one of his men. Splendid. At last we'll be able to bring that murderer to justice. Where are they? At my construction camp. The Tiger Woman is guarding them there. And she'll testify against them. 
Can you send a couple of your troopers out there with me to help bring them in? Certainly. The patrol should return here in about uh, 30 minutes. They'll go with you. Thanks a lot. When they're ready, I'll be at my office. Goodbye, sir. I'll bail out Wilson. We'll find out what happened to Morgan. Troopers, grab the Tiger Woman, use her as hostage to get to the oil field camp. Destroy everything there. Where's Walton? He's waiting for me on the edge of the town. I'll report back to him that you're free. Drop that gun. Get the horses. Tiger woman has disappeared. They couldn't have gone to town and we would have met them. There are tracks leading in that direction and they're headed for the barricade. Tiger woman. They took our queen toward your oil field camp. I suspected that. Send a drum message to your warriors. Well, we must not. They warned that it would kill her if drums were heard. She's in great danger. We must ride fast to save her. I'm sorry, sir. This is as far as we have authority to go. Well, all right, then. Stay here and help the warriors guard the barricade. I'll try to save her. Don't move. Put her in the truck. We'll use it for our getaway. Get in there. Put it over there.
did you get the... Alan came, but the men escaped in the truck. He went riding after them. And tiny. He can't catch them on horseback. Then I'll drum a message to my warriors and tell them to stop the truck at the barricade. Say evil men are coming this way in a truck. We must stop them.
woman safe. Yes, she's with Jose. As for you, Morgan, I'm going to turn you over to the troopers. When you're facing the scaffold, maybe you'll tell us who your boss is. Now get going. Morgan's capture is serious, but it's not fatal. We still have time to plan something before he faces trial. But thought as we'll press for an immediate trial. And with the Tiger woman's testimony, Morgan is sure to be convicted. Well, fortunately, legal procedure is not that simple. Her testimony will keep Morgan in jail. But a reasonable time will elapse before he's brought to trial. Morgan's just been brought into the Commandant's office. And the Tiger woman's with him. This is our chance. After she files her complaint, she'll start back to the temple. We'll capture her on the way. 
We'll force her to give us the urn from the Sky God's tomb. Then we'll do away with her. The only witness against Morgan. I'll radio my men to ambush her on the road to the temple. Good. Meanwhile, I'll see what's going on at the Commandant's office. This testimony is sufficient to indict him. Lock up the prisoner. This is all we can do until the trial. Then I may return to my people. Certainly. I'll have Mr. Saunders inform you when the trial is about to start. A bodyguard will escort you to your own territory. I'll call the barracks. He can meet your escort there. With Morgan out of the way, we should have no more trouble. But we'll have to work fast, Jose, if we're going to bring in an oil well before the franchise expires. Go to the construction camp, get the rest of the equipment ready to move the field. I'll finish up the work here and meet you there in the morning. Congratulations, Saunders. Capturing that scoundrel Morgan is the best thing that ever happened around here. Thanks. I hope this will be the end of the trouble. So do I. Jose, you can show the Tiger Woman to the barracks. She'll meet the escort there. You might as well ride with them as far as the construction camp. Right. What did you learn? Is the Tiger Woman going back to the temple? Yes, but with a trooper escort. That won't stop us. I sent out enough men to take care of them. Good. I hope your men get there in time. What happened? We were attacked. My companions were killed. The tiger woman and the warrior were captured and taken into Desolation Canyon. Get inside and rest. I'll have the commandant send for you. I must ride and tell Alan. If they took her into Desolation Canyon, it must mean they have a secret cab somewhere in there. But where? On the rocky ground of that canyon, it's impossible to follow their tracks. Yeah, that's true. But Morgan must know where the headquarters are. If he were to escape, we could follow him there. Uh, the commandant would never permit that. Well, I think he will when he finds that a tiger woman's life is at stake. I'll phone the commandant and explain our plan. I believe he'll cooperate with us. He knows without the tiger woman's testimony, Morgan will go free anyway. And he's just as anxious to see Morgan hung as we are. What is it, Mr. Saunders? The Tiger Woman's party was attacked on the way back to the jungle. She was captured and taken into Desolation Canyon. 
It's impossible. What about my men? Well, three of them were killed. The other one was wounded. But he managed to escape and bring news of the attack to Jose at the construction camp. It's incredible that those bandits openly attacked my troopers. Well, they undoubtedly are some of Morgan's men. They'd take any risk to do away with her since she's the only witness against him. This has gone far enough. It approaches a state of insurrection. I will mobilize my entire command and lead them myself against those outlaws. Get away from that radio. Open up the cell. Thanks for all the information. Forget you're dealing with smart people. Important engagement with a tiger woman. If it weren't for the noise, I'd get rid of you right now. Trick what? Yes, but I would have been worried if I had known that Potter was taken out of his shells. We've no time to lose. We must ride fast if we're going to keep Morgan in sight when he goes into Desolation Canyon. This is your last chance. Will you order Tugula to get the iron from the Sky God's tomb? Never. A woman would die before she would consent to desecrate the tomb. I will get the urn. Iron that chair. Slipped me a gun and the rest was easy. How did you get along with the prisoners? Okay, we worked the tiger woman over a little and Tagula decided to get the iron for us. Fine. One of my men will accompany you to the temple. That won't be necessary.
Linda Sterling was one of the most beloved and most fabulous jungle queens ever. Her Tiger Woman is iconic. So it may come as a surprise to learn that she graduated from UCLA, Phi Beta Kappa, and taught English, Shakespeare, and literature at Glendale College for 27 years, receiving the Distinguished Faculty Award for Outstanding Teaching. Her continuing education included New College in Oxford, England, the Universities of Madrid, Moscow, and St. Petersburg. In addition, she pursued Irish literature in Dublin, and Renaissance studies in Ashland, Oregon. Linda Sterling was the last, perhaps the greatest of the cliffhanger serials Queen's next to Pearl White of the Silent Era. Yet, she dominated the genre during the sound era and is fondly remembered by serial buffs. Linda Sterling was born in 1921 as Louise Schultz in beautiful Long Beach, California. She was bit by the acting bug at a very early age. At just 12 when she took acting classes in school and then with the community theater. She eventually enrolled and studied for two years at the prestigious Ben Bard's Academy of Dramatic Arts. She paid for her education by working as a model. Her cover picture on a magazine brought her to the attention of Republic Pictures. The Tiger Woman serial was intended for the Nuka serial Queen Kay Aldridge, but she was exiting Hollywood after her marriage. After an interview with Sterling, Republic Pictures signed her to a seven-year contract. The Tiger Woman was her first serial and credited movie. She was an excellent actress, but she couldn't ride a horse, and there was a lot of horseback riding in the series. But, through determination, she quickly learned, and The Tiger Woman was a great success. She appeared in more than 40 westerns, features, serials, and television shows from 1943 to 1959. She is remembered most for The Tiger Woman, Zorro's Black Whip, Manhunt of Mystery Island, The Purple Monster Strikes, The Crimson Ghost, and Jesse James Rides Again. Linda Sterling has the Hollywood record for being the number one bondage queen when it comes to ropes, gags, and whips. She was tied up and gagged more than any other actor. But this seeming damsel in distress could also crack a whip, bringing men to their knees and dominating them. She said, I made my living getting beat up, tied up, gagged, and thrown off a horse. Reflecting on her Hollywood years, she said, but despite everything, those days were wonderful fun. Everyone was congenial, we managed to find time to laugh a lot, play practical jokes, and kid around. I learned how to work fast and well. Yet when the old serials are shown today, audiences marvel at the production and quality that they had. That's because everyone did their best to make the serials good. Linda Sterling passed away in 1997 at age 75. She had a 44-year marriage to writer-producer A. Sloan Nibley and was survived by their two sons. One writer characterized her as possessing presence, wholesomeness, beauty, and versatility. And those are what made her the heroine that she was, and still is.